All right, I've seen the first episode of Ms. Marvel, uh, titled Generation Y. Well, it's not bad. It, you know, I and I, I pretty much approached this as thinking this is similar to Star Girl, which was a show I expected to not like and was pleasantly surprised. It's only one episode for Ms. Marvel, so I can't really say it's entirely the same thing. But it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you've got this teenage girl. You get a lot of the high school stuff, which I'm loath to get into. But, but, <laughs> even here, where most of the story is just introducing you to, to Kamala and to her, her family life and all that stuff and uh, this boyfriend of hers, they're not dating, but it's clear that, uh, you know, they want to and all that stuff and so you're introduced to them and it it it's all fine i mean it's almost like it's the beginning of some kind of sitcom type show in a lot of ways just in this episode alone her parents steal the show uh, and much more interested in, in them than <laughs> and the rest of it is one of the things that do uh that, that did bother me about the assessment of this and even with the comic with the comic book uh, what little I saw, there were stories that were just your basic superhero stuff, uh, especially for a young superhero. And uh, the template of chasing Peter Parker, uh, which uh, a lot of these uh, comics do because, well, it's Peter Parker. <laughs> that whole uh, narrative. Uh, and uh, the, the, I guess, qu quintessential superhero, the, the, the full fulfillment or, or the culmination of what was laid down by Superman, Batman, and uh, and the original Captain Marvel, Shazam. A lot of that's there. You know, you have the the, um, the noble, heroic elements of Superman and power. You have the tragic and dark elements of Batman with uh, the death of Uncle Ben. And then you have the youthful uh, excitement and, uh, and joy for uh, adventure and whatnot out of uh, Captain Marvel. So it, it, and it all came together with Spider-Man and it clicked and it, it became this big deal. So it's understandable a lot of people per pursue that say, so, well, I'm going to do my teenage character. But it's like you pursue it too much. This, well, my teenage character is different because it's a girl. <laughs> but it's the same type of deal. It doesn't mean it can't work. It's just just about all of them um, have failed. I mean, they can't make one that's on par with the popularity of Spider-Man. But they can come up with a character that does well enough. Uh, but so, uh, but the, the aspects of Ms. Marvel, uh, the Kamala Khan version, um, is it was born out of you know identity politics and representation. That's that's just true. Um, it doesn't mean all the stories had to be, and they uh, they weren't, but for the most part, they were. And they did terrible things with it when they turned her into a, a little fascist foot soldier for Carol Danvers. Uh, but that's the craziness of it. So the comic book I was never really interested in. That being said, with the, uh, some of the uh, promos and whatnot and details of the show, uh, that does take uh, quite a departure from the comic book. I mean, she doesn't have the stretchy powers and I, I don't know. I just, I, the only one I respected with stretchy powers is Mr. Fantastic. And that's just because his, his super brain is far more powerful than his stretchy powers. <laughs> that's his real weapon is how, so it never really mattered. Plastic man was just silly. Um, an elongated man. I don't know. I don't really think much about him. And then we get, of course, Elastigirl from the, the Incredibles, and that worked out okay. So it's not that big of a deal. I don't know. I just like they kept doing these silly poses with her, with her big fist and stuff. And but the idea that she's wanting, to, literally wanting to be derivative of Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel, I would have thought that some sort of cosmic powers would have made more sense, and that it's it's similar to hers and that sort of thing. But apparently it's magic powers. I don't know. They'll probably find out that this bracelet she finds, and she doesn't find it. It's sent to her from by her grandmother, I guess. And there'll probably be some backstory they'll, they'll cook up for that, unless the grandmother is going to be an inhuman. Because in the comic book, it's revealed, oh, Kamala's, uh, you know, she's got inhuman DNA in her, and the Terrigen Mists activate her powers. And that's how that goes. Here, uh, she finds this bracelet. She puts it on. 
and ta-da, she's got powers, and that's it. Um, it it's kind of weak, but I, I'm assuming the show will detail the backstory of this uh, bracelet that she has. Uh, so the superhero aspects of it is not really all that. It's very little of it in this show. The, the, the discovery of her powers causes some mayhem, and she has to try to deal with it, which she does very badly. Uh, she's just starting out. But she's all excited now she has powers just out of nowhere, you know. <laughs> but again, it's the first episode. I'm sure they'll deal with it. The more, the more interesting aspect is actually her family life and all that stuff that that in and of itself, that's not a woke thing. Now, no doubt, uh, people behind the show, certainly Feige, they'll go, oh, look, look what we did for, for little Muslims. We got ourselves a little Muslim. And that kind of approach, no doubt, is there. And, they, oh, boy, we can check off that woke point and stuff like that. But in the narrative of the story, it's perfectly fine. And it's actually the more interesting aspects. So you get a little tour of, of life of being a, a teenager who's a Pakistani uh, or at least descended from a pack. I think I guess the parents are actually uh, the immigrants or whatnot. I don't know, but anyway, that kind of thing, and it's fine. Uh, and, and like I said, the parents kind of steal the show, and the parents are right, especially her mother. She's, you know, concerned about Kamala getting serious, and she's like, her head's in the clouds, and she's dreaming all the time, and she's not doing so great in school, and that sort of thing. The mother is absolutely right. Uh, I'm hoping the narrative doesn't go that she, they say, well, she's wrong, and that Kamala is so fan-obsessed. And that's another thing that takes it back to Spider-Man, which they didn't correct until the third film for Spider-Man. Is just He was just a, you know, a celebrity-obsessed fan. And, oh, I want to be a superhero, too! And he stalks Tony Stark and all. <laughs> well, here, it's, instead of Tony Stark, it's Carol Danvers and... Um, Kamala's all obsessed about that and wants to be a superhero. That'd be cool and all that without any of the hardships and whatnot of what uh, makes a hero. Hopefully that's what the series will do to where it's sort of she's going to become kind of uh, sorry for what she got, what she wished for. And that kind of thing, like it's a powerful lesson for her, which was the Spider-Man story. You know, he, he's arrogant and wants to be a celebrity and then. He doesn't do anything to prevent what becomes the death of Uncle Ben, and he learns that powerful lesson. But it's just the way it goes. So in this case, what what terrible thing could happen to Kamala that she understands she's uh, she's got to use these powers for that, and it's it's not fun and and uh, adventure and all that. Uh, it's a very serious and terrible burden more times than not, and that would make for a very nice little package of a superhero story provided that's the narrative we'll get. I don't know. Right now, we're just meeting her. She's this teenage girl, and uh, she's getting upset that her you know, parents keep wanting her to get serious because she's on the verge of adulthood, so of course she needs to be, um, and all that. But then she she learns that lesson, too, that all the better. Um, but it was it's, it's well-performed and everything. One thing that did bother me an awful lot was they do this thing because she's off in fantasy land all the time, so they think it's cute and clever. And in some aspects of it where, they, where she's describing to this guy she likes and uh, about they want to go to this, this uh, cosplay contest at an Avengers convention type thing. Um, and she's mapping out how they can do it because she's sort of grounded and she's not supposed to go and all that sort of stuff. And there's sort of these, these cartoon illustrations that they do all over the place. And in that scene, it's fine. But they keep doing that crap on and on and on all over the place. And it, it's like, what? Is she on something? And uh, <laughs> But even with the, the boyfriend or would-be boyfriend, is all by himself. It's still going on. But I mean, because she's texting him and stuff. But I mean, it's just... Yeah, boy, yeah, you just wasted money on that. Yeah, needed to, you know, step up the the special effects, which weren't really all that good for the powers, but you know, good enough. Uh, I'm seeing worse. You know, I watch a lot of CW superhero shows, so <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> uh, but, um, but it's good enough for the scene. It's only very brief, so, so, um, it's actually off to a good start. Uh, again, the parents steal the show, uh, and um, it's not so great as a superhero show yet. 
you know, if she gets the lesson, understands the burdens of being a hero and that sort of thing, would go a long way uh, to make her more of a more acceptable uh, character. But she's got an uphill battle because of what the woke era has done. So uh, it's unfair, but that's what what Marvel Comics has wrought, and uh, that's the way it is. And uh, hopefully, so. It's kind of like the show would have to be really spectacular instead of just being a, a good little show. But, again, another but. <laughs> uh, if, you know, if I had a little daughter, I wouldn't have a problem with her watching this show. Similar uh, in the same thing about Stargirl. Uh, these are both shows that are not really for me, but I can see it for what it is objectively. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, for Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel.